Hey, thanks for tuning in. In this video, I will show you all the things you need to consider when you want to set up a remote workflow for a small creative team. Whether you work on animation, VFX or game projects, there is some kind of infrastructure you need to set up. We will talk about all the things you need to consider and the tools that might help you. Because I'm a developer of Anchor Point, I will also mention Anchor Point in this comparison, but I will also mention other tools so you have the freedom of choice. So let's start first with the things you need to consider. The first thing is asynchronous communication. That's basically a no-brainer, especially if you work in different time zones. We need a way to chat together, to share some information and to do some video calls. The next thing is file distribution. And this is again, another no-brainer. What you don't want is that everybody has their files on their own hard drive and then if you use vTransfer or Slack to send files around, that would create a very, very big mess. You want to have one single source of truth, one shared space where everybody is working from and all the files are basically there. So a Dropbox is a typical example for that, but there are also good other alternatives. The next thing is, once you set up your source of truth, you need a folder structure where the whole team agrees on that. A good folder structure is basically following your workflow. So this one, for example, works for me. I have a briefing folder where I get all the information from the client. Then there is a concept folder where I do mood boards, I collect references, I do research and development. Then if I work on an animation, I have an assets folder and a shots folder where all my shots are located. After that, I have an editing folder where my premiere files are. And then there is a delivery folder which has all the files which are then sent to the client. Yours might be a bit different. What's important to remember, add always numbers to the folders so you can sort them properly in Windows Explorer. So once you set up the folders, the next thing is to set up naming conventions and versions. So you always want to know which file created that render. You also want to know what is the latest version. A good naming conventions with versions helps you with that. So a naming convention consists of multiple parts. The first thing is the place of the project. So for example, this might be an asset and let's say this is a character and the character is called belly. So I would put belly in the name of the asset. Then the next thing be what is the task. So for example, is this modeling, is this rigging? So let's say I work with two different files for both different tasks. So the task's name should be always in the file name. And then at the end, the version number. Sometimes you can also include the initials of the artist who's working on that, but that's totally up to you. The good thing about all this is you just need to set up the file name once. And then if you use tools like Cinema 4D and After Effects, they allow you to save incrementally. So the whole version numbering thing will be increased once you save incrementally and you don't need to rename the files again. So this is all the thing on the file level. Now let's go to the bird's eye. You want to keep track of your progress and have a high level overview of what is still to do. So the simplest thing to do that is having a to-do list. In case if you work with assets, you have an asset list which just have a check mark if they are already done. The more advanced way of doing this is using a production tracker. And production tracking is basically the same like a to-do list but in a more advanced and more sophisticated way. On the production tracking side, instead of just having a check mark, you would have, for example, a status. So for example, this asset here is in a status not started. Later, it can be in progress. After that, it can be waiting for approval if you work with an art director on the project. Then maybe it can be in review state. So let's say the art director gave feedback and the artist needs to adjust something. And finally, there's an approved state, which is basically the done state of the asset. All right, the last thing you need to consider is a good review system. So creative work lives from iterations. The artist produces a new version, the creative director gives feedback on that, and then the artist is producing the next iteration. What you don't want to do is creating screenshots and then putting them into Photoshop and then draw on that and sending this over Slack or also send videos over Slack and add some time comments on that. That would create a whole mess. So what you definitely want to have is a good review tool, which basically facilitates that process. So speaking of tools, let's move to the tools section. The first thing is for asynchronous communication, use something like Microsoft Teams, Slack or Discord. Don't use something like Skype or WhatsApp because the other ones, they have channels so you can organize your communication better instead of bumping everything into one single group chat and it can get messy there. The next thing is file distribution and we mentioned already Dropbox, but there is also Nextcloud, which is a good alternative if you want to host your files on your own and if you want to have more control on that. But I personally prefer Google Drive because Google Drive has the file stream mode. So file stream means that Google Drive is not only syncing folders like Dropbox, for example, does, but it creates a network drive for me, but I can really work on it. And it feels like working from a NAS. It works like working from a server directly. This is way more convenient in my opinion. Anchor Point basically does the same like Google Drive, the only difference that you can choose where your files are hosted. So whether they are in the US, whether they are hosted in Europe, you have a bit more freedom in that. 
Then the next thing is you need a production tracker or some kind of organizer for the high level view. Um, a tool like Notion, Coda, or maybe Google Sheets do the job pretty well. The most important thing is that you have like a matrix overview that you basically see in a table what's the status, who is currently working on that, or some additional things like, for example, the frame range of a shot. Anchor Point basically does the same, but it's doing it directly on the folders, so you have everything in one place. The last thing is having a review tool and a tool like Frame.io or SyncSketch do their job pretty well because both allow you to annotate on images and videos. SyncSketch also allows you to annotate on 3D models if that is what you need. And they are working this way that you upload something to the browser and then you send a review link to the person who is giving you feedback. Anchor Point works pretty similar with the only difference that the file is still located on your Dropbox, for example. You don't need to upload it anywhere because Anchor Point basically looks at the file, opens it up, and then you do the annotations directly on the video of your Dropbox. So if that's what you prefer, that could be a way to go. All right, I hope this was helpful. Um, we only scratched the surface of all the things you need to consider because there can be a deep dive into any other topic. But I think that should be enough to get started with a remote workflow. Thank you for watching.